catch them in the pasture, run them in the pen, work them on the Sunday, do it all again, race them in the sand, buck them in the mud, drip a cowboy's sweat, bleed a cowboy's blood. I'm Zeke Thurston, 2016 World Champion Saddlebrock Rider, and you're watching the Pepper Stewart Show. Uh, that's what he told you. He told you that I didn't. He did. So that's what you're doing because you're bored, apparently. I don't know. But that's what's going on. A big show for you guys, as always, because why would you want a little show? Nobody wants a little show. Everybody wants a big show. That's what's going on today. We got another great interview lined up for you guys. Another Paramount Network TV show. We got somebody from that. We'll get to that in a minute. Other than that, we've got plenty of cattle news. A lot of cattle news. Everybody wants to know what's going on with that. They've heard about the uh, EU deal with the European Union. We're going to get into that. We've got a scholarship opportunity for your young cattle person. If they want to do that, and it's if you're going to win your kids, we got win your kids, win your calves. We got some tips for that. Uh, and, and like I said, a great interview coming up. Uh, PBR, some horse racing, the odd news. You're going to really enjoy this. The odd news. I don't even know how this happens. I have no clue how this happens. We're going to round it out with some great entertainment of another show that's coming up. But uh, action packed show, as always, just what you guys want, we give it to you. So with that, take a look at this clip we've got right here for what's coming up in our interview segment. It's so much more than just cowboy hats and the spurs. When I walk through the gate, all of them are my rivals. This is gonna be several million people seeing our sport for the first time. The billion dollars, that's a game changer there. The other riders, I look at them as competition, not as friends. I need to make a statement here. I really don't care what it takes. I'm going to win. The bottom line is anything can happen. This business is tough. The lows can just kick you right in the guts. The owners want to see some results. This year is going to be it. It better be. I can't have any mistakes out there. It's just going to be a ton of pressure. I'm not a good loser. Say a prayer, and that's about it. Oh my God. Second place is the first loser. Nobody wants to be second. Everybody wants to be first. You want to go into it to win first. Why would you not? So, great show on Paramount Network. Follows up Yellowstone. Though you're watching Yellowstone, follows up Yellowstone. The Last Cowboy. The only thing, I think they should have called it something different, like the, the Reigning Horseman or something like that, because The Last Cowboy. Even some of the folks on the show are kind of like, ah, I don't know about calling it that because you get a whole different um, idea when you say The Last Cowboy. But we've got somebody from the show coming up here shortly we're going to talk to. But right now, it's time for cow stuff. And everybody has blown up the interweb net about this. But don't, you know, you know the old adage about your chickens and your eggs and your chickens about counting your chickens and counting your eggs well yeah don't don't do that because that was that's what happened in china with the china deal Every, you know everybody got all excited about this beef in china that was going to take place and then all these tariffs happened and then the china's not buying from uh, our farmers like they said they were going to so everybody's all upset that's what happened so how about this Wall Street Journal sent me this of the 45,000 tons of non-hormone treated beef allowed in the EU, the European Union, every year. The U.S. will now supply 35,000 tons of it. Uh, President Trump set an agreement with the European Union for more beef exports during the, an event they had last week. Uh, Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer signed the deal one day after the latest round of trade negotiations between the U.S. and the China failed because China failed to reach the agreement. So China didn't come through. So everybody's all excited about China. It didn't happen. So now we got this. 
with the European Union. The U.S. and the EU reached an agreement which allows for more U.S. beef to kick off in June. It should have kicked off already. I don't think it has. And the deal was approved in July. Now, the only problem with this is everybody's all excited about it, but why? It hasn't even happened yet. China didn't work. That was a flop. All the farmers, they were expecting to send goods to China. It didn't happen. So now you got the European Union. It sounds good on paper, but talk to me when it happens. You know, what they say, show me the baby. Talk about being pregnant all you want to, but show me the baby. I want to see this deal happen. Once it happens, we'll talk about it. Until then, you won't hear another word because I, I don't, I, all the talk sounds good, but I want to see the action. I want to see it actually happen because beef prices have not gone up. They haven't. Matter of fact, I just sold a whole pasture full of cows on Saturday. And I'll tell you right now, the prices have not gone up. But if you got cow kids, the National Cattlemen's Foundation is now accepting applications for scholarships. The scholarship was established by the National Cattlemen's Foundation to honor successful, the successful career of the late W.D. Farr. Farr was a third-generation Coloradian. Coloradian? Is that even a word? Coloradian? Pioneer rancher, statesman, banker, was known for his extraordinary vision. If you want to apply for this scholarship, if you're a graduate student, a graduate, a graduate student, planning to pursue a career in the beef industry, submit your information to nationalcattlemensfoundation.org. You only have till September 13th to submit, so get after it. You're running out of time. You're going to wean your calves. Right here, we got five tips for winning calves. I'm going to give you five tips, just the tips. Use lick tubs when winning your calves. Cattle lick tubs for free choice supplements. It's always good on your calf. Do it. We do it. You should do it too. Make sure your starter foot, your starter feed is palatable. Your calf needs something. If you're going to start them on feed, make sure it's something that they can eat. It's got to be palatable. Something's good to them. You need to make sure it supports the immune system of the weaning calf. You need to find the right feed form. Make sure the physical feed form can influence their consumption, make them want to eat more. And then you want to prioritize your starter feed. You want to evaluate it. Don't go for the cheaper feed. You know, it might be cheaper up front, but it's going to cost you later. So make sure it's good feed that they're going to like. Because you want your calves to eat more. More is less. Cattle prices, what's going on in the stockyards in your area? As always, you can go to pepperstuart.com, click on Livestock Reports, and there is probably over 20 or 30 different reports from livestock auctions all around Texas, Louisiana, Oklahoma. There's some Kansas, even California. They even sell cows out there in California. Check it out. Look it up. And with that, we're going to take a break and be right back. All right, we did tell you we had a great guest for you guys today, and that we do. We've got a guy coming in, third generation, from a family of world champions in the reigning world. With that, we've got the young man who's making a name for himself in the reigning world, and with that, we've got Cade McCutcheon. You there with me, Cade? How are you? Doing good, doing good. So you, you working some horses today? Yep, just got done. <laughs> every every day, all day is how it works. So, I tell you what, let's kick this off and uh, tell us a little bit a little bit about your background, kind of growing up in a in a reigning family that kind of led you to pursue uh, the reigning world. Yeah, ever since I can remember, uh, I was around horses. I got on my first horse. I was probably not even a year old. I showed my first horse when I was seven. It's it's just part of my blood at this point. Now, as part of your showing through through your lives, you played, you did some other sports, you did sports throughout school, and, and maybe a little bit of basketball. But tell us kind of what it was like as a as a young man to represent the United States of America at the World Equestrian Games and take home some gold medals. That was an unbelievable experience. To do that at my age was a little bit overwhelming at times, but it, it was unbelievable. It was something I'll never forget and something that's pretty hard for me to explain. It was a lot of fun. 
Now, how was it as being a young man like yourself and going into that and, and with your family background, how much did your family kind of help you, uh, you know, get through that and, and prepare and be ready to, to bring home a gold medal? My family had a lot to do with it. My grandfather, who was on two gold medal teams, owned the horse, and he, you know, helped me through every step of it. And then to have my mom and dad, who were both on gold medal teams, there just to have my back and support me through the whole thing, it meant a lot, and I couldn't have done it without them. Now, you're also training horses, so can you tell us a little bit about your, your training program? Uh, yeah, I try and just do whatever's best for the horse. You know, not every horse is going to be a, the type of horse that can go win a gold medal, but I try and do what the horse can do every day and not overdo anything. Just the best that horse can be and, and be happy with that. Now, as far as reining, reining, you know, reining horses and competing in reining is kind of your, your bread and butter, but do you compete in any other... Any other equine events or equine sports other than raining? Nope, I'm just a rainer, straight rainer. Raining all the way, okay. Now, let's talk about this. There's a new TV show out there on the Paramount Network called The Last Cowboy, and it's really putting the spotlight on the sport of raining. So what do you think that's done so far? That's been great from everything I've heard. I've really enjoyed watching it i thought i think they do a great job of portraying you know what the business and what what all the people in that show are about and i'm really excited for the next few episodes to see how it ends up now if there's somebody out there that's been watching this show and and watching uh, the last cowboy the first couple episodes have been out there and people are watching and you got somebody out there watching that's thinking man that looks fun you know i ride horses every now and then and it looks it looks fun i want to check it out what kind of advice would you give somebody like that? Go for it. It is a lot of fun. Uh, just, you know, contact anybody. I'm sure there's somebody around you that does the rain. You can look it up, and it's a lot of fun. You'll really enjoy it. It's as fun as it looks. Now, I'm sure you're watching, you know, you're watching The Last Cowboy. What other tv show out there that you're watching that you would consider be kind of your guilty pleasure that that you that you watch other than uh you know the last cowboy i like watching yellowstone come on right before the last cowboy that's been a real good show <laughs> and we got to be on that a couple weeks ago too so it's fun to watch that they like to put spotlight raining you know once a season and that so it's always fun to support that show back all right, okay. Well, man, we, we appreciate you visiting with us and telling us a little bit about what you do and, and the sport of raining. And uh, we got a, we still got a few episodes to watch before you guys end up the season, so we we don't know what's going on. So all we can say is, you know, wish you luck, and uh, we'll see what happens. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right, and with that, that right there is the man himself, Cade McCutcheon, third generation of reigning world champions. And other than that, we'll take a break. Be right back. All right. Rodeo time. It's time for some rodeo news and such because that's what we do. We talk about stuff. If you didn't know, now you know right here just east of Dallas, Texas, over in Allen, the Zimmermer Kubota PBR Challenge took place, and none other than Jose Victor Lime took that. If you all remember my interview with him after winning the uh, the Global Cup, which will come back again next year. So he come in. You know, he's been dominating here in Texas. This guy has been on fire, just dominating the bull riding in Texas. So can't wait to see what else is going on with him. That kid, You know, he also raises bucking bulls. If you didn't know that, he's not only a bull rider, he also raises bulls too. So we look forward to seeing some bulls from, uh, from Jose Leme. How fast do you want to go on your horse? You want to run fast? How fast do you want to go? Well, let's talk about some fast, fast horses. Right here, Baddish, think about that, Baddish, wins the third King George. All right. Baddish added another chapter to a remarkable renewal of the Glorious Goodwin highlighted this weekend in the racing world. Uh, the Glorious Goodwin continued on Friday with Baddish Winning the Group 2 King George Quater Stakes at 5 
furlongs for the third straight year. So this horse is getting it on. Jim Crowley, who's up for uh, for trainer Charlie Hills, the five-year-old Dark Angel Gildan took command of the race in the final two furlongs, winning by three-quarters length. So he's he's getting it done. Now, he entered this year after finishing second in the Blue Point in Group 1 in the King Stand Stakes at the Royal Ascot. He was also second to the Blue Point in the 2018 King Stand, but has a clear field now with the Go, Go Dolphin retired. But check this out. The course track reported that Battish touched 48.63 miles per hour during that second furlong at the King George. So he is hauling butt. More horse racing news for you. Who's McKenzie? It's not Spuds McKenzie. It's just McKenzie. Won the $1 million Whitney by one and three quarters lengths at Saratoga on Saturday. This gave uh, Bob Baffert, you know, Hall of Fame trainer Bob Baffert, his first victory in the grade one race. It was, it was Baffert's second start in the race. And first, since 2014, McKenzie earned an automatic berth to the $6 million Breeders' Cup Classic in November at Santa Ana. Now, he was ridden by Hall of Famer Mike Smith. He ran a, a one and a quarter, one and an eighth mile in 1.47 and tenth, tenth tenths. On Saturday, the four, the four to five favorite paid $3.70 to win. That's why you never bet on the favorite. You can bet on the favorite if you want to, but you got to bet on the long shots if you want to cash in. McKenzie's had seven wins and 12 career starts, earning a little bit over $2 million. The Whitney, run, the Whitney was run on Mary Lou Whitney Day, honoring the late breeder and owner and philanthropist nicknamed Queen of Saratoga. She died on my birthday at 93 years old 93 she died july 19th on at 93 years old i hate to tell you but at 93 years old you've seen a lot of stuff and you've done a lot of stuff so to make it that long is a feat in itself because who who can say they made it that far not that many people so what we're going to do take a break come right back and bring you guys some odd news oh no it's that time again it's odd news odd news what you like because you are odd as the news and i've got i've got something right here i don't even know how this even makes sense it doesn't sound good i don't want to try it i probably don't even want to see it but your wiener friends at oscar meyer wieners has an idea they've decided that they were going to do something that shouldn't be done so Oscar Mayer is branching out into, into the dessert game with this latest process, project. Check this out. Ice cream sandwiches with hot dog bits. Do you want to eat that? Oscar Mayer announced Friday on National Ice Cream Sandwich Day that it partnered with New York. Well, that makes sense. New York is always crazy. With New York Ice Cream Company to create the ice dog the ice dog sandwich an ice cream sandwich inspired by hot dogs the sandwich will features cookies as buns contains bits of hot dog meat and spicy mustard ice cream who was going to eat that who in their right mind thinks you know what i just can't wait to get some nice hot dog spicy mustard ice cream the company said that it's wiener mobile will be driving around manhattan to distribute free samples. Well, yeah, you're going to give it away, I think. Because I'm not eating that. I don't know who's eating that. Now, this announcement comes on the heels of the condiment company French's creating a mustard-flavored ice cream that's going to be available this summer. I'm not eating mustard ice cream, and I'm not eating ice cream with hot dogs in it. you gotta, you got to split the two up. You can have a hot dog and then some ice cream. Or you can have an ice cream and you can have a hot dog. But don't eat an ice cream ice cream hot dog. It sounds terrible. Let's stick with New York because stuff happens up there. So let's do this. A New York, <laughs> up in New York, they presented the GOAT award. The GOAT, great, stands for great of all time. The award on Thursday was actually the five. Real G-O-A-T. Goats. 
On Thursday, five goats that had been working to clear the pl- inv- plant invasion from the city park. Riverside Park held its first ever goat awards on Thursday to honor five members of the goat herd that had been grazing on an invasion of plants at the park during its horticulture program. They said the five winning goats were chosen, chosen based on votes from thousands of locals who have been closely following the animal story that they were brought into the park in the spring. I wonder if they did some goat yoga while the goats were eating. While they had the goats in the park eating, I wonder if somebody went there and tried to do a little goat yoga with those goats. The top honors went to Massey, a female goat. She was presented with a, with a medal and a bouquet of edible flowers. Edible or not, that goat's eating them. The 24 goat herd had been grazing the invasive plants, including Japanese knotweed, wineberry, poison ivy, mugworm, and English ivy as part of the park's woodlands restoration initiative. Riverside Park includes more than 60 acres of... 60 acres? That's a lot to be in New York. I didn't think New York had that much grass, but apparently they do. That's a lot of, that's a lot of grass and a lot of goats, so... Nice, nice to see that. I'm just, I just, I want to know about the goat yoga. I want to know if anybody tried to goat yoga. There's 24 goats out there and 64 acres. I'm pretty sure, being in New York, somebody tried to come out there and throw their mat down and get a goat to poop on them while they were doing yoga. Because that's usually what happens. Are you having trouble with your business? Do you need to know how to do marketing? Are you looking for a marketing scheme? Marketing 106. I got one right here. These come out all the time from different companies and it's a, it's a great marketing. It's a great marketing ploy and it works all the time because just like right now, I'm talking about it. Me and every, everybody else out there talking to people are talking about this. An internet provider is offering one weekend dream job, which I don't know if you can have a dream job on the weekend, but here we go to someone willing to take the weekend vacation free from your phone and your computer. It's called the Digital Detox Challenge, and they're offering $1,000 to somebody who can spend a weekend at Joshua Tree National Park in Southern California, but they have to give up using any tech devices for the two of the three days. In true millennial style, you can pull out your tech on the last day to document and share your experience. So they... They don't want you. They want you to uh, go two days with nothing, but the third day, they're going to throw your phone to you so you can take all the pictures you want and be sure and post that you were there. The selected person will be chosen August 26th from applications from the website, and will be put up in a retro Airbnb with amenities including air condition, hot tub, a pool, and running water. Running water is always key wherever you go for the weekend. Uh, instead of hunching over to the tech device all day, you can explore hiking trails, take a dip in the pool, read a book, meditate, relax in the hammocks, watch the stars. Now, the website that's doing this, I'm not telling you that because that's part of their marketing. For a thousand bucks, they're going to get everybody everywhere to talk about them. So that's how you, that's how you do it. If you want to if you want to market your company, you've got to do stuff like this and throw out thousand, two, three, four, five thousand dollars because you can get more marketing by doing something like this. And you can't buy an ads anywhere. So that's why they're doing this. That's why this company is doing this. But anyway, the, I, was, I was thinking about this today. And I, I was thinking about it. And I was like, you know, for people in my generation, in my age, that's easy. Because there's a lot of, there's a lot of weekends when I'm doing stuff, whether I'm working cows or, or on the road or doing something, that I don't, I don't have time to put my phone out. And that's something else people complain about. Like, hey, you know, if you're working cows, why don't you take pictures? Why don't you video this, video that? Well, I don't, I'm not thinking, hey, you know what? That's a good shot. I don't have time for that. If I have time, I'll make it and get some shots out for you guys. If I don't, I don't have time. And I think in my generation, growing up and not having access to the internet for long periods of time growing up, I think it, it's possible for somebody to do it. But if you've got somebody in their 20s, you know, in their, their early 20s that have had technology since birth and been on a phone and been on a computer it's going to be a lot harder for somebody like that to throw it down for, for a week, even a weekend. And I know this because I watch the kids at the house on their phones. We, we, can, be in the, we can be in the living room watching a movie. I have the wife in there. She'll throw up something on, on the Netflix or the Amazon Prime or one of those. And we'll throw a movie on to watch a movie and come there to watch it. 
and you watch a movie, you look over, and they're like this on the phone doing that. I'm like, what are you, what are you doing on the phone? What, can you not even make it through a movie? Went to the movies the other night to where I could take a good nap. I took a, I took a great nap. We went to watch Annabelle. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened to the whole movie. About five minutes in, I went to sleep. They woke me up when it was over. But the few times that I did woke up, when the guy walking in front of me bumped my leg and I woke up to see what was going on and hear screams, I'd look over and the kids would be on their phone. I'm like, why are you not watching this this movie about this Annabelle? So I, I, I don't get it, but that's the way it is. So I don't know if that's going to work out for the youngsters or not. But if you want to take a nap at the theater, you can go watch Annabelle. It worked for me. It may not work for you, though, depending on how you deal with it. Oh, speaking of Annabelle, let me put this out there. Those of you that don't know or don't know that I, I did go to jail and spend the weekend in jail in Jefferson or uh, Palestine, Texas, at the Jefferson County Jail because they have a overnight haunt where you spend the night in a jail cell. You do ghost. They, it's a ghost watching. They say it's a ghost hunt. I call it ghost watching because you're watching ghosts. You're not hunting them. You're watching them. So we did spend the night in, at the, uh, Palestine, in Palestine at Jefferson County Jail. Spent the night in a cell and uh, did some ghost, you know, watching stuff like that. I've got another one lined up coming up uh, before the next episode. So we'll be talking. I'll be talking about it next episode. But I will be going to Mineral Wells to the haunted. It's supposed to be a big time haunted house over there. And we've got the whole house to ourselves for the night. And they, they allow 10 of us to come in there. So we've got a whole bunch of people. Uh, apparently, they've got 20 cameras running all the time. In the house, we're going to bring our own ghost watching stuff too, but I'm going to bring some of that back when I come back on the next episode. Speaking of spooks and ghosts, this woman in Tennessee was in a hotel. She's like, you know what? I'm in Tennessee. I'm going to take a night, take a, a, a spend a night in a hotel, get a good night's rest, a good night, good night's rest. Cause I, you know, that happened to me when I was in Fort Smith, Arkansas a couple of weeks ago, we went to go. Uh, ride the train and, and check out some stuff in Fort Smith and, you know, got in there, got a good good night's sleep. I didn't ex- think of this at all, and I probably should. So this woman staying in a Tennessee hotel said she had a rude awakening when she opened her eyes to find this. A snake slithering across her body. I would have went through the ceiling in the hotel if that would happen to me because me and snakes don't get along. So Melinda of Nashville said she traveled to East Memphis for a doctor's appointment and stayed at the Hampton Inn in Walnut Grove when she woke up Friday morning and had an unexpected bedfellow. So why did they, why did they say she had an unexpected bedfellow? Did she have an expected bedfellow that didn't show? I don't know. She's not a snake person. I can deal with spiders and all the icky things, but snakes is not my thing. I agree. She said that first she felt something on her arm, opened her eyes, and discovered a green snake. She flipped the snake off her arm, called for help, <laughs> and it, it landed on the bed. And she called the front desk and said, hey, there's a snake in here. And the uh, hotel staff ushered the snake out of her room, and they compensated her for the hotel stay. So, sorry about your snakes, but here, we'll give you another free, we'll give you another free night if you want one. Luckily... It was just a little green garter, garter snake, so it wasn't no big deal. But the surprise is something else because you don't want that. You know, it wasn't that long ago I had snakes. I had a snake in the house. Come to the dog door. I had a snake in the house. And my son woke up. He was screaming, snakes, snakes, snakes. And I just thought he was making, I just thought he was just saying that because of what happened to him the day before. And, uh. No, there was a snake in there, and I was looking for something to hit it with. My wife just went there and grabbed it and threw it outside, so it, it disappeared. But um, snakes are not good. But what's good is entertainment, so we're going to come back and throw down some good entertainment news for you guys right after this. All right. Welcome back. We're going to round this thing out with entertainment news. We're going to keep on track with Paramount Network. A lot of stuff is going on there. It's a great channel. If you have the channel, Check it out. If, if you're not sure what channel it is, just search it. Because a lot, of the, a lot of the stuff on Paramount Network you can watch on your computer. And there's some stuff you got to have a subscription to watch. So it just depends on what, what show it is what's going on. And they've got a great show coming up that I can't wait to watch. It's going to take place uh, this next week, which I think it's going to air August 18th. It's going to premiere. And I'm setting my DVR for this because I can't wait to see this. And what that is... 
It is. I am Patrick Swayze, and Patrick Swayze. It, they're going to celebrate him in this new in this new show, and we've got a clip here. We're going to show you in a minute that was recently released, and it's going to feature archival footage of Swayze along with interviews from a lot of those that, that knew him really well. You know, like his wife Lisa. You know, Lisa. You got Demi Moore, Rob Lowe, Sam Mallett, Jennifer Grey, and a lot more other people um, that that knew Swayze, and. When it airs on the 18th, if you don't know, now you know, that would have been his 67th birthday. And, you know, he died at 57 back in 2009 with his his battle with pancreatic cancer. But it's, it's a great deal because if you don't know about Patrick Swayze, not only was an actor, he was also... Uh, he was also into the, the Western life, the rural life. You know, he was a horseman. He rode horses. He did a little, little bit of calf roping. He did you know, some horse stuff and, and he was into all that. And so as far as the Western lifestyle in with him and, and his acting and everything else. So this is going to be a great thing to watch. So be sure and check it out. It's coming out August 18th. So what we're going to do, we're going to end out with that. So other than that, be sure and check out everything going on at pepperstuart.com. There's links for everything. You can buy t-shirts. You can see reports for cattle, uh, for cattle sales. You can see some featured artists, some great, there's some great artists featured on there. If you want, if you're into some good music, there's some good music on there. Just a lot of good stuff for you to check out at pepperstuart.com. Check it out, look around. And with that, we're going to round this thing out with this clip here that you don't want to miss coming up August 18th of I Am Patrick Swayze. I mean, you're only on this planet for so long. Go for it now. Patrick had something about him that was very rugged, but that also had that beautiful, gentle, sensuous ability to move. Patrick performed like he had something to prove. He was a gymnast, a world-class cowboy, a ballet dancer. Really? I was just looking for any way to make a mark. I remember watching Patrick and thinking, yeah. So good. He charmed everyone. He'd find a way in and make you just fall in love with them. As soon as we started dancing, it was just like, <sighs> it was important to be great. He carried that over in his life. He'd be bubbly and fun, and then as soon as he's by himself and alone, he would just crash. I have these demons that run around in my insides. I've done everything in the world thinking I'm going to get rid of them. I don't know if it ever will. We had so many challenging things to deal with, but I still loved them. There was an innate loneliness, and I think that's where his art came from. Ready or not, here comes Mama. To be taken seriously, he really needed to work harder. Pain don't hurt. That's him coming out of the plane, and it's in the movie. Would everybody do that? Not a chance in hell. When you're a master of your body physically, you think you are larger than any disease. Whenever anything good in my life happens, I'm just afraid I'm going to lose it. This was raw courage of somebody who knew they were going to die, but wasn't making an issue of it. We show them that the human spirit is still alive. What Patrick accomplished in his life, very few people get to accomplish. 